This chapter was fantastic in so many different ways. And I think it comes down to backstory and what Oda is showing us without specifically blatantly telling us what's going on. Yeah, this chapter was amazing. First, guys, this video will contain spoilers from the recent chapter, One Piece chapter 1035. It reminded me of something. The One Piece world, as we know it, we have a very optimistic view because we've been following the Straw Hats. So when we look at pirates, when we think about pirates, we think about Luffy and we think about how they go around, not necessarily being heroes, but being heroic and doing things to help people. But before we move on, something you can do to help me is to subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications and like the video. That would certainly be appreciated. But what I'm talking about here is the other side, the people who failed. In the recent chapter, we get a flashback of King. The meeting between Kaido and King is very similar to Luffy and Zoro's. When Luffy stumbled upon Zoro, he was being held captive. Definitely for different reasons, because King is being held captive because he is a Lunarian and he's being tested. More than likely, the world government, they were trying to mass produce in some way whatever they could find. Figure out the secret to his body so they could emulate it, replicate it rather, because the world government, what they do, they acquire power so that they can stay in power. Kaido was also an experiment. So with the timeline I have in my head, Kaido is just starting his crew. So I'm assuming Kaido, this is right after God Valley. And what happened in God Valley? Well, the Rocks Pirates were defeated and Kaido, ultimately, he was more than likely captured. Yeah, so this video is sponsored by Keeps. Keeps is the new era, man. And especially for males, trust me, as you get older, inevitably you start losing hair right and that can also be very scary when it begins but the first thought is how do you treat it and do these things actually work well that leads us to keeps keeps is a subscription service that makes it a bit easier for men and less embarrassing dealing with hair loss again this is something that's difficult to come to terms with trust me i know that personally but you find some solace in the fact that there is a solution once you find that solution it's like a godsend like okay i can somewhat correct this keeps is offering a generic version of the FDA approved medication so it's way more affordable and again you're treated from home with a licensed doctor recommending the correct treatment plan for you. you can't forget keeps has more five star reviews than any of its competitors it does take four to twelve months to start seeing results so you got to be patient but this is legit if you're ready to prevent hair loss and keep what you got go to keeps.com slash bda law or just click the link below to get a whopping 50 percent off your first order so that is k-e-e-p-s dot com slash bda law again i know it's tough to come to terms with but it's much easier with keeps so something about kaido that we see all the time kaido talks about betrayal you losing if you're weak people will abandon you that's what happened in god valley the kaido we know now is not the kaido of the past he was weak at least in comparison to the others in comparison to rocks big mom white beard shiki he was weak and abandoned and was captured by the world government it's all coming together the reasoning behind kaido's existence the reason why he does the things he does but we still don't have the full picture something we do know now though is that kaido back then was very reminiscent to luffy and roger somebody who set out into the world to make a difference who felt like they could make a difference of course king's name you can criticize it all you want but kaido not only noticed his name but also played upon his emotions the name change wasn't just about the name it was giving this kid confidence but something that stuck out to me is when kaido said stand by me and i'll never sell you out i think for kaido him and big mom's relationship it feels like brother and sister but did big mom sell kaido out of course she saved kaido's life by giving him that devil fruit but what happened how was he sold out what is the story behind this? What I really want to bring the attention to, though, is what Oda is selling us here. Kaido used to be like Luffy. We didn't see the full conversation between Kaido and King for obvious reasons. Obvious reasons being Oda is saving it. But Kaido went into his dreams, his goals, his purpose in regards to changing the world. I think Kaido was definitely enamored with Rox. I think Rox sold Kaido the dream, telling him about the secrets of the world. Joy Boy, Sun God Nika, everything that was meant to happen, the place where these things were supposed to happen and culminate place called Wano. Why Wano was important to the rest of the world. Why the rest of the world was kept away from Wano. Kaido fell in love with this story. Kaido started to believe that he was the chosen one. He was Joy Boy. He was the one that was meant to change the world. How wasn't he? On the brink of death, look at the crew he was on. Big Mom, Whitebeard, Shiki, Rocks. He felt like he was special, an apprentice around these people. Now, something to keep in mind here is that after this encounter, it warped Kaido's mind in a way where he felt like at this point everything is predicated on strength okay i want you guys to pay attention here kaido was taken in we don't know exactly 
with age, but at a young age as an apprentice on the Rock's crew. At that point, maybe it was too soon or maybe, you know, Kaido wasn't ready. But due to what happened, because pirates will be pirates, Kaido then went forward and he's created this pirate crew. We know the Beast Pirates was a meritocracy, is a meritocracy. I'm saying was because they're falling apart. And so I wonder if what Oda is trying to show us here is how bad decisions of up upbringing up situations can completely warp someone we've seen it already with pirates of the past the thing is dreams don't go away even when you fail you still have those dreams but you come to the realization that i can't achieve those dreams people hated roger because roger was the victor but what about all these other pirates that failed that didn't accomplish their dreams that didn't get to go to laugh tale and see the secrets of the world or understand that they were too early what about the people who felt like they were too late what about kaido fresh-faced, bright-eyed, coming off an intense battle against Gold Roger, probably being enamored by Roger, understanding the light that Roger had, illuminated by this light, illuminated by the light that was Rox, he set out to be and prove the world that he was Joy Boy. Ultimately, he failed. Again, we've seen this before, pirates who had great ambition, amazing fortitude, strong in their own right, but they went up against different people. Crocodile, so much charisma, pretty great devil fruit, but ultimately he left the new world because he realized he could not compete with someone like Whitebeard. Temper expectations, understanding your ambitions may be a bit too high. What about someone like Moria, who set out, had his amazing crew, and got wiped out by someone like Kaido? Were these things intentional by Kaido? What happened? to him past this point for him to view the world the way he does he said to luffy you're not joy boy either so now he's ultimately come to the conclusion that he is not joy boy drinking his sorrows away and now he's searching for joy boy did kaido hear words the thing is for a lot of these characters it feels like if something went wrong this is who they would be what if luffy joined shanks's crew then something went wrong where luffy wasn't mentally or mature enough and wasn't prepared for life as a pirate shanks understood this because he was a pirate as a young kid he was like no you're not ready shanks himself experienced the sadness of a journey coming to an end abruptly being on this amazing crew traveling the world seeing everything so ambitious and ultimately just cut short because your captain the person you looked up to was sick and ultimately died but for kaido whatever this incident was it changed him the thing is though the great part about this what oda is setting up this also happens to marines aokiji we know for a fact coming into the marines his demeanor was different his sense of justice was different he viewed the world differently and ultimately he changed because of a certain incident we presume it to be ohara then became lazy lethargic looking at the world from a pessimistic view understanding one man is not enough maybe i am special but i'm not the special person someone else has to come along kaido realized that something some incident made him realize he was not joy boy so that bright fresh faced smile so much ambition and vigor turned to anger and despair and now wanting to see the world burn or rather wanting war wanting to go out in flames of glory looking up to the likes of whitebeard roger kaido was a fan but this is what happens when things go wrong but how does that translate to the rest of his crew what about king the fallen soldier that was tortured by humans who now views his race as superior or let's go back kaido the person who ultimately wants a world war to go out in a blaze of glory as opposed to luffy the person who's just about the journey and traveling with his friends and wants freedom true freedom and doing anything you want on the seas who, who more than likely because he doesn't care about being joy boy probably is joy boy kaido going through life manifesting the fact that he was joy boy and again this is a theory based on the things he says how he's going about life now he failed in his mind it failed so for him it's about renewed purpose he is if things went wrong for Luffy, if the pirate crew he looked up to didn't work out, if the dreams he set out to accomplish failed, now there's new purpose. And typically you turn towards a life of crime because then I've tried to do things, I guess, the right way, going through life with purpose and it didn't work out. Crocodile, Moria, Kaido. Kudos to Aokiji for remaining an admiral after seeing what he saw, which shows that he's a different type of individual. That's why him working with the Blackbeard doesn't make much sense because it affected him that much, but he did not leave the marines however i digress the straw hats what all is doing here i think is showing us the beast pirates they're not bad people per se things happened to them that warped them forever for kaido i mentioned what happened to him for king he was experimented on abused used somebody sent me something on twitter which showed that it reminded me of something king said to zoro that his kind is too inferior to have a chance against him so king from that perspective looks at the world based on how you were born your lineage and how that impacts 
your performance. But Zoro, remember back then, he was furious at Kuina because she felt like she couldn't compete just because she was a woman. That's the way of thinking that Zoro hates the most. And I know a lot of us, we've been trying to make Zoro this sword god. He has some connection to Ryuma, but does it matter? Would it matter? Not at all. What about Queen and his incessant obsession over Jerma to the point that he's using all of Jerma's techniques, obsessing over Judge who probably did something to affect him. Now he's warped to the point that he's experimented on himself where sometimes he's unrecognized recognizable these characters are not bad people they're just a result of bad circumstances they're a result of the one piece world where sometimes you win sometimes you lose this is a pirate's life right isn't that crazy and it goes down the line hurt people hurt people i think of doflamingo I think of kaido in that relationship but then i think of what doflamingo did to bellamy where bellamy eventually realized oh i i can't compete your dreams don't go away but gotta keep living as interesting as it is it is pretty sad but the thing is it's warped kaido to the point that he is trying these same tactics on his daughter where the self-fulfilling prophecy that he used on himself it ultimately didn't work out he's now using a weird way the pygmalion effect to force yamato set expectations of her and hoping she will fulfill them even though that's not what she wants to do this is like the straw hats right luffy forcing zoro to become his right hand and then seeing zoro wielded a sword and say hey you can become you should become the world's greatest swordsman and zoro's like but what if i just want to cook no but you should become the world's greatest swordsman i have this expectation of you hurt people hurt people i think ultimately this short backstory has given us so much more depth with not only kaido but the other beast pirates and just looking at it the deeper you look the more is revealed a beautiful chapter i'm sure the more we find out about queen the more we'll see just how warped he was right but all i'm thinking about is things like with squad where you have these dreams and now you're working on the white beard but then white beard he has the son of the pirate king who ruined your dreams working with them those dreams those feelings don't go away that's why crocodile was so impacted saying that's not the white beard i lost to what he's really saying is that's not the man that broke me that made me discard my dream it's a really brutal cycle that's not really talked about a lot in the one piece world but it is a big part a major part we just don't see that side enough the failures and how they had to pick themselves up and move forward because everybody's not going to be luffy even kaido a yonko of the seas realized that he was not good enough it's it's heavy to accept that and he had to find new goals find new purpose because what do you do when everything you've been trying to do your entire life just doesn't work out damn guys give me your thoughts how do you feel about all this fantastic chapter i just need more backstory from these characters from jack from queen whoo oh to be in his bag right yeah guys give me your thoughts make sure to like the video if you did subscribe to the channel for more content like this follow me on twitter at brago dace follow me on instagram at brago d dot ace thank you to my patrons i appreciate you guys so much again guys like and subscribe and i'll catch you in the next one peace Start doubting me, I felt lost. I